out, Katrina. Uh, Lucas said that you were interested in what other people are calling the Sinclair method for treating alcoholism. Uh, I call it extinction or pharmacological extinction. So here comes the two minute variety explanation. First thing to recognize is that addictions and alcoholism are learned. It simply is a matter of learning the behavior of drinking alcohol. Each time that one of my rats or a person drinks alcohol and the alcohol reaches the brain, it releases endorphins. These are sort of like opiates or heroin. And they make the neuronal pathways that have just been used get stronger. So the behavior of going to the pub and ordering alcohol and drinking it gets a little bit stronger. Now the amount that it gets stronger differs for genetics, for instance. We have a special line of rats here in Finland that were bred to have a lots of receptors for endorphins, uh, really get a lot of reinforcement from it. There is another line called ANAs and they drink and nothing happens to them. Same way with people. Some people, rather quickly, over just a few years, have this behavior get stronger and stronger and stronger until eventually it reaches the point where they cannot say no. That, you've probably heard the thing, the way to quit alcoholism is just say no to alcohol. Well, if you can say no to it, you're not an alcoholic. It's important to realize that there are behaviors, like breathing, that you can control a little bit, but after a while, you can no longer say no to it. You can hold your breath for a minute. I could offer you $10 and you might be able to hold it for a few seconds more, but there comes a time when you can't say no. For an alcoholic, it's the same way with alcohol. So what can you do? It happens that there are two processes in the nervous system for changing the wiring. One is this learning, making the pathway stronger. But the brain also has a way of getting rid of behaviors that no longer give reinforcement. This is called extinction. You've probably heard about it from Pavlov's research over 100 years ago, in which he gave dogs, he rang a bell, and then he gave them food. And they would salivate because of the food, but after a while, you could just ring the bell, and they would salivate. After they had learned the behavior, he could ring the bell, and they would salivate automatically. But if he rang the bell, and they salivated, but no food was given, the next day, this behavior was a little bit weaker. The pathways causing it had been burned out a little bit. You do it again, you ring the bell, no food, and the next day, it's still weaker. With rats and alcohol drinking, it takes about five days from them to be obsessed with drinking alcohol, to wake up in the middle of the day and come running up to the front of the cage and grab the alcohol bottle and pull it in, to, eh, it's alcohol again, good night. With humans, our brains are more complicated, it takes maybe five months, but it does work. There have been over 90 clinical trials. In fact, I was just talking to Lucas about a new one that has just come out uh, uh, from uh, a Dutchman, I think, as well, as well as a German, but this is the German clinical trial. And the treatment does work, not with everybody. Uh, about 80% of people, the alcoholics, do get better with this. But there are different types of alcoholism and about 20 percent apparently have their learning caused by something other than endorphins and we don't know how to treat them yet but this extinction method does work it's been proven to work and the fantastic thing is that you don't need willpower and after several months of going through this you're no longer interested uh, the patients are saying that before, all they could think about was alcohol. 
but now, unless there's some stupid reporter asking him questions, uh, mm -hmm. that he doesn't think about it anymore. And this is marvelous, being able to change what somebody thinks about so that they're not thinking about alcohol anymore. So, thank you for your attention. <laughs>